What is going on YouTube? Bryce builds it all your favorite AMP IA and part 147 instructor back with another video. It's been a minute since I've uploaded. I apologize for that. The start of the semester has been very, very busy up here at the AMP school, but I digress. In this video, I'm kind of continuing my practical projects. So this is aimed at uh, students looking to get their AMP, but I am going to show you how to do a aircraft butt splice, how to solder a wire, and how to use a solder sleeve. So if that interests you, Stick around. Now, before I get too far into this, I wanna say that the, the procedures that I'm following for this is um, AC4313 1B. When you buy terminals and things, they'll often come with a procedure or they'll come to a link to find a procedure. You can use that as well, but you wanna make sure that if you're doing this on an airplane, you're using the aircraft tooling, such as the double, the double crimp. You wanna make sure that you're using the right kind of solder and all that kind of stuff, but I'll get more into that here in just a second. We are going to start with the simplest of splices, and that is a butt splice. Now this is an aircraft um, mil spec butt splice or you know joint, whatever you want to call it. And the difference between aircraft and automotive is that this is going to be a double crimp. So I have the crimping tool here. And if I open it up and you look in the side, you can actually see that there's two sets of jaws, right? And you've got your little size indicators here, red, blue, and yellow. And it's got two so that when it crimps down, if I can sort of get this started in here without crimping it too much, it actually crimps it in two places so that the wire connection is a little more solid. So I've got this loaded. I'm just going to sit it here for a second and I want to show you the wire strippers next. Now, when you strip the wire down, if I were to stick this inside of here. When you strip the wires down, you don't want the insulation to be exposed or you don't want the bare wire to be exposed outside of this part of the crimp right here. And you also don't want it so short that there's not enough sticking out of the end so that the insulation is underneath the aluminum. You kind of want it as in line as you can. Now I've come to learn with my experience that that comes out to just a little bit over a quarter inch. So I'm gonna put it down inside of these strippers. The nice thing about these aircraft strippers, this is 20 gauge wire, by the way, is they have two jaws. I'm gonna to try to show you this. They have a jaw that clamps it, then they have the jaw that actually cuts it. Ah, I dropped it. Let me do this again. There we go. It's hard to film and do this. They have the jaw that grabs the wire, and this is the jaw that actually strips it. So all you do, is pull it apart and you can see it stripped the wire off of there nice and pretty and now i'm just going to gently release my hands not all the way until it lets the wire come out and then i'll let go of that and now that is stripped off of there so i'll twist this wire up i'll take it inside the butt splice and make sure i can definitely strip off a little bit more probably about another i only took off about an eighth of an inch i meant to take off a quarter but i'll take off a little bit more Right about there. I'll go ahead and do this other side real quick. There we go. Okay, and then like I said, you're gonna stick this inside the butt splice till it's bottomed out and you should be good to go. I didn't strip off enough. I'm always cautious. I never wanna strip off too much on accident and then I have to deal with um, having to cut this off. But if you do strip too much, you can very easily take a pair of flush cuts or just some diagonal cutters and shorten this down until it's perfect. But now, if I stick this all the way in there, I can see it bottomed out inside the inside and the insulation is ending right where I want it to. So the butt splice, really, really easy. Put this on here, hold everything snug, give it a good old squeeze. It is now, sorry, I'm trying to show the camera, it is now crimped down manipulate the other side there you go same thing take your time make sure you get everything lined up and there you go there's a butt splice down on a wire this would work in you know most of your installations you should be able to tug on it with a little bit of force without it coming apart I sort of pulled on it pretty hard I didn't mean to do that you should be able to tug on it with a little bit of force without it popping apart and you should be good to go Moving on to solder. Solder, it might help if you have a little helping hand or something like this to clamp your wire in, but solder is a little more difficult. A lot of times you're gonna use solder maybe when you want a cleaner connection. 
Um, whatever, I don't have any heat shrink on this. What you would do is you're gonna solder this together and once it's soldered and dried, then you will pull your heat shrink over and heat shrink it down to keep it environmental. I don't have that for the sake of this demonstration. Um, I've got my soldering iron plugged in off camera. I might pan over to that in just a second. And then I've got a couple different types of solder here. I got some real thick solder. I've got some thinner solder. Now I will warn you, you need to pay attention to the heat range on your solder. Make sure you're not using something that's too hot. Otherwise you're not gonna have a very good time. If the solder is kind of thin, like what I'm using, then it's gonna melt really easy onto your soldering iron. And I'm just gonna start by, you know, seeing this melt down. I'm gonna get a different soldering iron. This one's not very hot. Let me get a different soldering iron real quick. Okay, grabbed a better soldering iron. It's currently heating up. And the point is to tin this wire right here. So I'm gonna let this soldering iron sit in here for just a second, and I wanna talk for a second about the solder itself. This is flux core solder meaning it already has flux in it. What is flux, you ask? This is an example of flux paste. This is a much thinner liquid flux that you know you can put in there. But flux acts to keep corrosion from happening when, or any sort of contaminants from happening when you're soldering this joint together. So you'll put a little flux on there. Maybe you'll take some of this paste and you'll get some paste on there. And then when you put heat to it, the flux boils out. And the flux boiling out also helps draw the solder in, right? But this flux core solder already has flux in it. So if I put flux on this, I'll be introducing too much flux into the joint. And the whole point of solder is to have a cleaner connection. So if this is full of flux after it's cooled off, it's kind of like having a highway with traffic cones all over it and it defeats the whole purpose. So I want to do this without flux if I can, but I'll show you how to do it with flux. I'll show you the method without first. First, without flux, I'm just gonna take my solder and melt a little bit of solder onto the soldering iron until I have a nice little ball of solder on the soldering iron. You wanna make sure your soldering iron's not too hot and all that. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna put my solder on the bottom and my ball on the top and I'm just gonna work this back and forth a couple of times and then I'm gonna pull it off and now that is tinned. Let me take you off the tripod and I'll show you that up close. Here is the bare wire. I realize the camera's not focusing on it, but it's not tinned. And then here is the one that I just tinned, okay? So this whole end of this wire is full of solder. Now, what I tell my students is that I ask them what melts solder, and they always say heat, but heat doesn't melt solder. Solder melts solder. So in order to prevent yourself from overheating this insulation, because if you take your soldering iron and you stick it on this wire, and you let the wire get good and hot and then you try to melt solder in there, you're gonna overheat this and you're gonna burn the insulation and you're gonna get it really hot and it's just unnecessary. But if you already have a pool of melted solder on the soldering iron, when you put the solder iron, soldering iron on top and the solder below, it forces that solder that melts below up through the wires because it's trying to flow up to my heat source, which is the soldering iron. So the melted solder on the soldering iron is what's actually drawing the heat or drawing the solder up into this joint, not the heat. The heat is not what's melting it. The solder that's already melted is what's melting it. And this applies, I'm gonna clean the tip of my iron real quick. And this applies also when you're trying to remove solder. Let me show you what I'm talking about. I realize it's kind of dark in here, but let's say I had a light like this and all of these terminals are soldered together. If I put my soldering iron on here and try to melt this, eventually, I'm gonna overheat all of this and then the wire will come out. But if I get a little bit of wet solder, if I melt a little bit of solder on the iron first, when I touch that molten solder to this solder that's here, it's gonna melt a lot faster and I'll be able to pull this wire off that solder terminal without overheating this light or, what, or this wire or whatever I'm trying to not overheat. So, now that I have this tinned, I'm gonna go ahead and tin the other side. I'm gonna tin the other side exactly how I did the first side. It's kind of floating out here in free space, so it's a little tougher. Oh, we still got it though. There we go. You can, you can, if you get a little bit too much solder on the wire, you can sort of just melt your ball and sort of just drag it off the end, sort of melt it on there, and then just, you know, drag it off the end and it'll take the excess solder with it and it'll leave behind a real nice, clean, tin piece of wire. So now that those two are soldered together, I'll melt some more on here. And now all I have to do is take the two wires, 
and melt them together. Now I had a ball of solder melted on here. So when I touched the two, it instantly melted all of the solder that was in this joint. And now I have a really solid connection right there that's really clean. And if I tug on this, unlike that butt splice that I broke a minute ago, that's, that's a lot of force and it's not coming apart. That connection's gonna be really clean. The electrons are gonna flow right through it and be nice and happy. The only thing I need to do is remember to put my heat shrink on beforehand so that now I can pull some heat shrink over this and heat shrink it down. I will now show you the easiest possible method. Quick segue, this is this piece that I broke a little bit earlier because I tugged way too hard on it. If I take this flux paste and I get some of this flux paste on the end of this wire and then I, I take this solder and I melt this solder like this, when I put it in here, it's gonna boil all that flux out and it's gonna draw all that solder up into the wire as the flux paste melts out. But there's a problem, like I said, I'm gonna melt, I'm gonna have too much flux in that joint when I'm done and I don't want that. So you really should only be using flux, either this paste or this liquid, when the solder that you're using is non-flux core. Just like when you're welding, you can use flux core welding wire or you can use just regular wire and then inert, inert gas like argon or something to keep the weld free of corrosion. So I'll take this out of here and now I'll show you the easiest way. This right here is a solder sleeve and I'll try to hold it up close to the camera. Hopefully the camera focuses, but it's basically a piece of heat shrink with a piece of solder right here in the middle. And I've got this piece sort of set up. I've bent the wires where they're pretty much touching one another. Let me see if I can get a little bit better. Sometimes you can even twist them together or you can mesh them together. And that helps a little bit. Let me see here. But this is what I like to use at the house a lot. And see, now that I've got this joint together, I'm gonna to slide this up over the top. And a solder sleeve is basically a piece of heat shrink, but it shrinks down just like heat shrink will, and you'll see that here in just a second. This one's a little too big for what I'm doing, but that's okay. It shrinks down just like heat shrink would, and then that solder that's in the middle melts. And as soon as that solder melts, you pull the heat away, and now you're left with a joint that is both heat shrunk, so it's environmental, and solder melted on the wires that is connecting everything. Like I said, this is the fastest, easiest way to put wires together. I have an assortment of these at the house. They're great for repairing harnesses and different things. However, you know, sometimes you can get away with a butt slice. You do need to let it cool for a little while because you just had a heat gun on it, so you gotta be careful with that. But like I said, these are called solder sleeves. Love them to death. These are outstanding. You don't, you know, you can get these from like Amazon for like your car project. They do have um, mil spec ones. They do have aircraft approved ones that are even better. But like I said, it's just a piece of heat shrink with a piece of solder in there. And when you're done, you're left with a really clean uh, wire. So there you go, everybody. That video was how to do a butt splice, how to solder uh, two wires together and how to use a solder sleeve. So if you found that helpful or enjoyable, make sure you leave us a like, leave us a comment, subscribe. If you're gonna leave a comment, tell me what kind of practical project would you like to see next? Um, one person suggested a compression check. I do wanna show a compression check. It's just that our air, compressing system, our air compressor system isn't charged yet. So when that's charged up, it's like a whole system that feeds the whole shop. When that's charged up, I'll do a video on how to do a compression check. I'll probably do a big video on how to time a magneto. All those good kinds of projects that uh, attain to power plant. But if there's anything else you would like to see, make sure you leave me a comment down below. I will see you guys on Sunday. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you leave us a like, leave us a comment, subscribe, go build something, and be easy.